Hello again, it's me, Azac C2. And today I'll be talking about the presence of war criminal Gotabaya Rajapaksha in Singapore. Gotabaya Rajapaksha used to be the president of Sri Lanka. He was elected to office back in 2019 following the de devastating Easter bombings in Colombo. That incident <laughs> largely made his predecessor Maitri Pala Sirisena a lame duck which may have helped Gotabaya to win. Gotabaya is the brother of former President Mahinda Rajapaksha. Mahinda won the 2005 presidential election and served two terms all up. During his time in power, he ended the brutal 30-year civil war in the north of the country between the Sri Lankan government and the Liberation Tigers of Tamil Ilam. Gotabaya was the defence minister during the last stages of the Ilam War and the, the army committed numerous atrocities on innocent Tamil villagers during that time. As such, both Mahinda and Gota have been named as war criminals and there are many Western countries who, who seek to have them arrested and tried for war crimes. Mahinda lost power in 2015 to Maitri Pala Sirisena. This was after Mahinda had tried to ch change the constitution such that the number of terms a president can serve were unlimited. After Mahinda ended the Elam War, he was hailed as a hero and his family became immensely powerful after that. However, that did not stop him from losing to Maitri Pala, whom I suspect was working for New Delhi. Like Mahinda had got really close to Beijing. He had got the Chinese to extend you know, loans to Sri Lanka to redevelop their infrastructure that had been damaged by 30 years of civil war. Unfortunately, that spooked the Indians who feared that China was developing a fortress in the Rajapaksha family base of Hambantota in the south. This resulted in Maitri Pala being elected in 2015 as president and the Sri Lankan Freedom Party getting split. The pro Rajapaksha faction of the Freedom Party subsequently established their own organization called the Sri Lankan People's Party. They nominated Gotabaya as their candidate in 2019 and he emerged victorious over uh, Sajith Primadasa who later became opposition leader from the uh, Uh, from the United People's Power which itself had split from the, the United National Party. Du during, Prima during Maitri Pala Sirisena's time in power, he had mm, tried to investigate the Rajapaksha family for alleged corruption. but he, he had limited success in doing so. After Gotabaya won the pre presidency, COVID-19 hit and Sri Lanka's economy took a, a beating because tourism suffered heavily as a result. So over the the last three years, the country ran out of foreign reserves to buy essential items like food, fuel and man 
and things came to a head in February. The country was effectively bankrupt. There were rumours that the Rajapaksha family had sent away a lot of money to Uganda. Like food, fuel and medicine was in short supply. And the country had no choice but to approach China for fresh loans. They were also in negotiations with the International Monetary Fund for assistance. Pressure grew on the, the Rajapaksha family to step aside. The first to step aside was Mahinda, who, who had been appointed Prime Minister by his brother Gotabaya. Like, another brother, Basil, was a finance minister and he, he too had to go. Both Mahinda and Basil have since been prohibited from leaving the country. Next to, to go was Prime Minister Rani Vikram Singha, who had been appointed to fill Rajapaksha's void. Rani Vikram Singha had been under fire as well for allegedly protecting the Rajapaksha clan from justice. As protests began to mount, he too stepped aside. Gotabaya, meanwhile, flew to Singapore by Maldives. It was in Singapore where he announced that he had decided to quit the presidency. This meant that Rani, who had been appointed Prime Minister, would now have to step in as President. While Gotabaya was hiding in Singapore, a group representing Tamil civilians who had been victims of war atrocities during the last stages of the Elam War sought to, to have Gotabaya arrested to face trial for war crimes. A few days later, Singapore announced that Gotabaya's social visit pass was extended for another 14 days. Meanwhile, Statements from Colombo seem to indicate that, Raja, that Gotabaya will be flying back home soon. Okay. And so, what is he flying home to face justice, or has Rani granted him an amnesty? That's anybody's guess. Also, given that. Gotabaya is a politically exposed person. Why did Singapore even allow him into, into their territory when India had actually banned him from, from, from landing there? One cannot help but wonder if money might have changed hands. Like, did he, did he offer any money to the, to the Singapore government to let, for them to let him into the country without hassle? There was actually a protest against Gotabaya's presence in Singapore. The organizer was one Prabhu Ramachandran, who was a member of the People's Voice team who that contested in the last general election two years ago. Unfortunately, there was a, a, only one person who turned up to, to, to attend Prabhu's rally. 
well and given given Prabhu's name it sounds like he's probably of Tamil descent and many Tamils around the world are you know, indignant that Gotabaya Rajapaksha has escaped prosecution for war crimes for so long This reminds me of the time when Lee Kuan Yew who was then Prime Minister of Singapore who said that uh, Sri Lanka appeared to be the model for the newly independent Singapore to follow However, as the country adopted hardline Singhalese Buddhist nationalism in later years Lee Kuan Yew started having second thoughts this prompted him to reform the electoral system and he brought in uh, multi-member constituencies by merging you know, uh, three adjoining single-seat constituencies one of which had a minority candidate into one multi-member constituency Over the years this system had proved beneficial for the ruling party as it uh, effectively kneecapped opposition parties because they would have to field an equivalent number of candidates to match the ruling party as the multi-member constituencies increased from 3 to 5 men this resulted in a lot of walkovers because most of the opposition parties were small it has, was only in, at, the, at the 2020 general election that the opposition actually managed to make a breakthrough by capturing 10 seats spread across two multi-member constituencies Not to mention that you know, after the Sri Lanka's economic crisis came about a pro-government webpage if called Singapore Matters started dissing Gotabaya big time They accused him of playing populist politics and bankrupting his country as a result They said that he was corrupt and inept and our leaders should never you know, follow his example Yet the very same leaders you know, whom they hold in such high regard allowed Gotabaya to, to enter Singapore even when there had been so many allegations that he had committed war crimes during his brother's presidency You can say there's, an, there's a strong hint of cognitive dissonance in Singapore matters And we also have to look at the system in Singapore you know It is very likely that, the, that Lee Hsien Loong's eldest son with Ho Ching, his second wife Lee could become the next Prime Minister if, if what Lee Hsien Yang, the younger brother of, of Lee Hsien Loong says is true Lee Kuan Yew eventually passed the baton to his eldest son in primogeniture fashion and Lee Hsien Loong looks set to continue the tradition although Lawrence Wong is tipped as a possible replacement for Lee Hsien Loong in the near future 
it seems likely that he's just a seat warmer like Go Chok Tong who, who came after Lee Kuan Yew. Although Lawrence Wong has been hailed as a fourth, fourth generation leader and a man of the future, one cannot help but wonder if his strings are being pulled. Thing is, right now, under PAP rule, we, we, we have had it good, but the cracks are slowly showing one by one. If Lee Hong Yi ever becomes Prime Minister, well, God help Singapore. Because when that day comes, it will be the sign that we could follow the path of what Sri Lanka has taken under the Rajapaksha family. The only way to prevent that from happening is to stop the Lee family from holding on to power for eternity. The only way to stop the, the Lee family is to vote their party out. Come 2025, please do the right thing. Okay. Vote PAP out. Vote WP, SDP and PSP in. Remember that. Bye for now.